we've seen examples of writing simple formulas using arithmetic operators like plus and minus and of course you can extrapolate from that to seeing how to use formulas uh, arithmetic operators like multiplication and division as well now we're going to go a little further and see how to use functions in formulas because many times when you write excel formulas you'll be you doing certain complicated operations complex operations and you will invoke several predefined functions let's see what they are okay now suppose you have this uh, spreadsheet with b2 containing 200 c2 containing 100 and we want to uh, find out write a formula let's say in d2 or somewhere else to find out uh, to display whichever is the larger value of these two, 200 and 100, right? So you'll write a formula which says equals max B2 comma C2. In other words, tell me the value which is the maximum of the values B2 and C2, right? So max, uh, notice that this looks pretty different from what you've seen earlier. Earlier you saw things like equals A1 plus A2 or equals A2 plus B2 right we use just an arithmetic operator plus in those whereas here we are saying max and max is a function which is pre-built into excel okay so max is a function that determines whichever is the largest value among all the values you specify here we have just specified two values b2 and c2 and equals a max b2 c2 is going to suppose we put it inside e2 it's going to say the result is 200 because 200 is the larger of these two values. Okay, so max is the function as I've already pointed out. The way you enter it equals max within parentheses b2 comma c2. Okay, so here max is the name of the function and always when you're using functions you will have the function name followed by an open left parentheses and then you've got several values that you put inside the parentheses and these individual values are separated by commas so in this example this function has two arguments these are called the functions arguments right so that is like a function is a black box you put in values into the function and out pops a result okay so b2 and c2 are the arguments that you supply to the function and of course you separate the arguments with commas and then you finish off the argument list by the closing parentheses okay so that's what all functions would look like you'll have a function name parentheses several arguments in this case there are only two arguments you may have a function that has only one argument that is also possible we will encounter examples of those or you may have a function that has five arguments uh, uncommon but we will see that in uh, all the examples we do many functions will have three or four arguments and then you'll have the closing parentheses okay uh, so examples of functions would be equals uh, uh, max b2 comma c2 then you could even say equals max 10 comma a1 right the difference between those two is here 10 is a literal number and this is a cell address or you may have three values equals max b3 comma b4 comma b5 okay so the max function has some inputs and it outputs the largest argument provided okay so the number of inputs could be any so you've got two examples in which you have two inputs uh, two arguments or two inputs and one example in which you have three inputs you could have an example in which you have provided 10 inputs and shortly we'll see how we can even provide a thousand inputs to the max function okay it might feel like it's going to be a laborious task typing all those thousand addresses but there's a different way of doing it okay so think of a function as a box into which go several inputs and out of which comes an output one output okay and the inputs are what we called earlier as arguments okay some food for your brain so suppose you're given this spreadsheet and suppose you write this formula equals max 150 comma 20 comma b2 okay it doesn't really matter into which cell you put this so if you put this into a particular cell what will that cell display okay so take a look at it think about it determine your answer and then continue the uh, video Okay, so you're saying max 150, 20, b2. 
Okay. Of course, the result is going to be 200 because 150 and 20 are direct values we have given, but B2 contains the value 200. So we are now effectively saying maximum of 150, 20, and 200. Of course, the result is 200. Okay, equals max B2 comma C2 comma D2. Okay, I assume that you pause the video and you're continuing it. And of course, the result is going to be 400 because that's the highest value among B2, C2, and D2. So it's as simple as that. Important point. Now, this function gave us the maximum value of the argument supplied because this function is called max. And the max function just does that. It computes the maximum. So what the result of a function is going to be depends upon what function you're calling, right? And which is dependent on the name of the function. So the name of the function and the arguments that you supply to it will together determine what output you get. So if you're calling the max function, then you will always get the largest value of its arguments. But there are thousands of functions within Excel, right? And these functions perform all kinds of sophisticated and simple computations that we use repeatedly. And when we write formulas, it is up to us to pick out the correct functions for each formula. Rather than say correct, I would say the appropriate function for the formula that you're trying to compute. I mean, for the computation that you're trying to perform. Okay, so you shouldn't always think that when you call a function, the result is always going to be the maximum value. In these examples, we got the maximum value because we used the max function, right? Of course, you can guess that if you had instead used the min function, you would have got the smallest value, not the largest value. So there is another function called min, M-I-N. And incidentally, notice that I have written the function name in uppercase, but Excel functions are not case sensitive, right? So you could write the whole function name in lowercase, or you could mix and match upper and lowercase letters. It doesn't matter. In fact, you will notice that Excel automatically converts all your function names to uppercase anyway. Let's do something a little more complicated. Suppose we wrote this formula equals max B2 plus D2 comma C2 plus C3. Okay, so pause the video and think about what the result would be and then continue to see if you got it right. Okay, I assume you paused the video and continued it. You got your result. And the result is, of course, going to be 600 because what it's telling you is it's saying first add B2 and D2, so which is 200 plus 400, 600. And then add C2 and C3, which is 100 plus 300, 400. So basically, it's saying what is the maximum of 600 and 400. Okay, so remember that when you pass the arguments to the function, uh, to any function, you separate the arguments by commas, right? So the first argument is B2 plus D2. The second argument is C2 plus C3, okay? And therefore, the result is going to be 600 because B2 plus D2 is 600. C2 plus C3 is only 400. So the maximum of those two is 600, right? So that's another important thing that when you're supplying arguments to a function, the arguments can be literal numbers or literal text depending on the type of function so it could be a literal value or it could be an address or it could be a formula okay now you may say well if it's a formula why didn't we write equals b2 plus d2 well that's not required because you've got the equals here at the beginning anyway right so the moment a uh, content of a cell begins with equal to then excel is going to say okay i'm going to treat the whole thing as a formula and after that, whenever it sees something that looks like a cell address, it's going to treat it as a cell address. So in general, a function call looks like this. So I'm just, you know, putting in placeholders within angular brackets. So you'll say equals, and then you'll put some function name. Right now, we've looked at only one function called max. I have uh, peripherally referred to another function called min. And then you put in an open parenthesis and then you supply all the arguments to a function and then you put the closing parentheses and you separate the arguments with commas. 
Okay, like I've already mentioned, there are functions which have no arguments, and you can have a function with a thousand arguments or a million arguments. Okay, and we will shortly see how you can have functions with so many arguments. Okay, so uh, that's that's what a function call looks like. Function name, open parentheses, arguments if any, closing parentheses. That's a function call. Of course, preceded by an equal to. If you don't put an equal to, then Excel doesn't know that it's a formula and everything else changes.